No, later, tomorrow. Okay, so here is 9.3. In most books, um, they do this like with 9.1. Um, and I, you know, and I thought, I went back and forth, but I decided to leave it this way. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna um, talk about the bridge and how to go back and forth between polar coordinates and rectangular coordinates, all right? Um, okay, so let's talk about how we started this whole polar coordinate business, right? We said that if you have a point P, there are essentially two ways to describe the location of point P. The location, also how you get to point P from the origin. So in rectangular coordinate, in order to get to point P, you have to go a horizontal distance and then a vertical distance, right? 90 degrees, rectangular. And then we said that might not be the most practical approach to do that in all situations. So we could do the same thing in polar coordinates and basically have a radius, have like a, you know, just a straight radius go from the origin to the point, okay? And then rotate a little bit. So basically, you can you could go radially out and rotate a little bit, right? But now, okay. So both ways you go to the same point, correct? So take a look though. If you go over x units and up y units, right? Or if you go out radially and then rotate, you get to the same point, right? And essentially, what do you make? What type of figure do you make? You make a right triangle. And boy, oh boy, do we know how to deal with right triangles, right? Because if you've got your angle theta and you've got your angle x, right? And you've got your r, well, what is x? Is x just the cosine? It sure is. So another way I can write x is x is r cosine theta, right? Because that's what we did with vectors when we resolved vectors into rectangular components because that's how the angle of theta and that value of x relate to one another. So then if x is r cosine theta, then what would y equal? r what? Sine r sine theta. So then if I were to write the location of my point, I can either say it's located at x comma y or r cosine theta, r sine theta. And that right there is how we go from rectangular to polar. I'm sorry, from polar to rectangular. All right? So to go from polar to rectangular, this is the connection. x equals r cosine, y equals r sine theta. All right, so let's just do one, okay? I have D in polar form, and I want it in rectangular coordinates. So what I want is x comma y, okay? And let's just think about this for a little bit. If my polar coordinates are 2 comma pi over 3, right, if this is the polar axis, and this is pi over 3, right? Then this is a distance of 2. That's where my point is, right? Okay? All right, so now when I... Let, let, let's go and find our rectangular coordinates. All right, so the x value is going to be r cosine theta, which is 2 cosine pi over 3. And how much is cosine pi over 3? How much? right so x is equal to 1 and I can do the same thing with the sine r sine pi over 3 so y is equal to 2 times root 3 over 2 which is just root 3 so then the point D is at 1 comma root 3 okay and let's think about that 
Does that make sense? That to go to this point, I go over one unit and up a little bit more, 1.7 or so, makes total sense, right? So that's how I do it. So to get to that point, I either go one and root three, or rotate pi over three and go over two. Isn't that cool? It's fantastic if you ask me. So let's do another one. Take a look at this one, negative 5 and 45 degrees, right? This is the polar axis, okay? 45 degrees is about there, right? That's 45 degrees. But if my R is negative 5, then it's in the opposite direction, so right about there, okay? That's my point F. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah? Okay. Okay, so let's see. Um, my x coordinate is negative 5 cosine 45, and that's negative 5 root 2 over 2. And my y coordinate is negative 5 sine 45, and y is negative 5 root 2 over 2. So where are the coordinates for point F? Negative 5 root 2 over 2 negative 5 root 2 over 2. Well, let's think about if that makes sense. Where is my 45 degree angle here? Right there. So if that's a 45 degree angle, does it make sense that to go to that point F, I have to go over in the negative direction and then the same amount down in the negative direction? Does that make sense? Of course it makes sense because it's a 45 degree angle and horizontal and vertical distances are the same, right? How cool is that? Yes, right? Of course you are, because you're saying the same exact thing in just different words, okay? It's like if I were to ask you how old you are, you can either tell me you're 17, or you could tell me you're 12 plus five. Same thing, right? Okay. Huh? Okay. Um, now, so how would we go from rectangular to polar? All right? Huh? When did we do that? It was on the homework number 62 and 9.1. Guess why that problem was chosen? Because, right, so it was chosen initially because it was going to be here, and it was put on the quiz because it was going to be here, right? So I'll get you in a minute, but if I have x, if I know what x is, and I know what y is, and I want r comma theta, well, if I have x and y, and r is just this distance, I've no, like, yeah, I can find that, right? Because of what? Pythagorean theorem. And if I know y and I know x and I want to find theta, I can find that too because y, tangent. So here's the big thing, guys. Do you notice that you've known, like you have had the tools, you've been able to do this ever since the ninth grade when you first learned sine, cosine, and tangent. Ever since then, you've had all the tools you need to convert between rectangular and polar coordinates. Think about that, right? It's just nobody told you to do that before. Now we're telling you to do it, okay? Okay, did you still have a question? Yeah, um, when you said plus one, maybe one x is Yeah, I'll, I'll get to that, yeah. Now, now, if your point is not in quadrant one, if it's in quadrant two, quadrant three, quadrant four, then it's up to you to find the corresponding angle. So here we go again. The book tells you to do this and that, but what do I tell you to do? Cross that out because you do not memorize that stuff because here it is, okay? If your angle, if your point is in this quadrant and you do tangent blah 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 and the calculator gives you negative 52 degrees 
Where is negative 52 degrees? It's here. Okay, yeah, that's fine, but my point is here. So then how do I get the corresponding point there? Well, this is the 52. This is the 52, right? It's between the x-axis and the terminal side, the x-axis and the terminal side. So now, if I go from 0 to there, how much is that green angle? 180 minus. Okay? If my angle, though, if my point is here and I got negative 52, okay? Now, I need to go to that point. Come on. Right? So how much would that be? 180 plus 52, right? So you have to reason it out yourself. Yeah. If if you were to get like a negative angle, but it was in the right quadrant, uh huh, that's you fine. Would have to that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, I'm I'm confused about this. Okay. I gotta get the R. Yeah. If we have to go to the first quadrant, it'll be 90 minus 78. If it's you, no, you just do 78. Okay. Find two pairs of polar coordinates for each point. So, okay, I have x, I have y. I want r and theta, correct? So, you have x and y, you could totally find r because that's the Pythagorean theorem. So, r is 4 plus 16 root 20, which is 2 root 5, and depending on whether this is a calculator or a non-calculator section, that will be 4.47. Okay. Theta is inverse tangent of negative 4 over 2. Okay? Okay, so let's go in, um, let's go in radian mode. As much as we love degrees, 99% of math and physics is in radian. Okay? Um, so, theta we get is negative 1.11. All right, let's just see if that makes sense. First and foremost, my point is at 2 comma negative 4. Which quadrant would that fall in? 2 oh, yeah, comma negative 4, fourth quadrant. Okay. Where is negative 1.11? Now, this is in radian. Okay, so if this is 0 and pi over 2, 3 pi over, I'm oh, sorry, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi, if I'm going to go in the negative direction, then it's 0, negative pi over 2, negative pi, negative 3 pi over 2, right? Pi is 3.14, so pi over 2 is 1.57. So negative 1.11, would that fall in, in this quadrant? Yes. yes, it would, so we're good. Because, because we, we, we really do want to get used to working in radian. On the, on the quiz, was it okay that we did it in degree Yeah. Let's, guys, I'm not going to answer. Let, please don't ask me questions about the quiz right now this is what we're doing so I'm gonna call this theta 1 remember it said find two pairs of polar coordinates theta 2 I'm gonna do negative 1.11 plus 2 pi okay so that'll be negative 1.11 plus 6.28 theta 2. So my two angles then, uh, my two coordinates are 4.47, negative 1.11, 4.47, 5.17. Okay? All right, let's do one more. Pi, then you would have to change R to be negative. Okay. 
No, because I added two pi, so now I'm going back. Okay, so here, radius is the square root of 1 squared plus root 3 squared. Yes, I'm getting, you know, I'm ignoring my negatives because I'm squaring. So this is root 4, which is 2. Ten, oh, shoot. Tent. Oh, darn. It's... Okay, so tangent, uh, theta is inverse tangent of negative root 3 over 1, okay? So theta 1 is negative 1.05. All right, I put that on my calculator. Now theta 2 is going to be negative 1.05 plus 6.28. 5.23. I know this um, version of radian is a little foreign to you, so I want to, you know, get, I want you guys to have some more ex exposure to this as well. So we have 2, negative 1.05, 2, 5.23. And again, that does make sense, right? Because we have positive x, negative y, we're in the fourth quadrant. So that makes sense. Okay. Yes, absolutely. I mean, it would be the right answer. No, and I will have specified, but I want I want us to work with these a little bit. Yes. You're sure? Yeah. Okay. Here. So let's talk about equations. This is partly the reason why I'm doing it now and not later because I wanted you guys to be able to graph first. So in um, section two, we graphed a polar equation that looks like this, r equals three. And we said that was just a circle of radius three around the pole, right? There. Now, back in the day in geometry, we learned that equation for a circle. This is the algebraic equation for a circle um, in rectangular coordinates. Okay, so how do you know if an equation is that of a circle? Well, here is how. Both x and y must be squared. There must be a plus in the middle. And the coefficients of x squared and y squared are equal. All right, and when all that is in place, then this is just r squared. So if I were walking down the street, I haven't said that in a while, if I were walking down the street and I saw that on a billboard, x squared plus y squared equals 9, I'd be like, oh, circle with radius 3 centered at the origin. Okay? And look at what we have here. Circle with, circle with radius 3 centered at the origin. Okay? Now, take a look at this. Take a look at the rectangular equation here, okay? That's a, you know, basic run of the mill linear equation. So negative 3y is equal to negative 2x plus 6. y is negative 2 over 3x minus 2. So you can see here, right? Y intercept negative two. It's I'm I just have a rectangular equation. I'm I'm trying to graph it. Two over three. So the y intercept is negative two, and so for the y inter uh, for the slope, I'm going up two over three, right? So basically, you see how that equation is the same as that graph. Now, if you were to put it in polar form. This is what it would look like. All right, so take a look at how different they look, but they're two different ways of saying the same thing, just like I said before. How old are you? 17, 15 plus 12, or 15 plus 2, or whatever. Okay? All right. So let's convert from rectangular to polar. So basically, 
if my equations are in x and y and I want to put them in r and theta. Okay? I want to take out x and I want to take out y. So in its place, I put r cosine theta for x, r sine theta for y. And then I need to simplify and I can use any algebra and trig identities that um, you know that I need to um, so you're in luck because those trig identities come back okay now take a look at this let's take a look at what kind of equation that looks like it could be x plus 2 squared y squared equals 4 so x and y are squared the coefficient of x squared is 1 the coefficient of y squared is 1 my that looks like a what that looks like a circle. A circle, but not centered at the origin because of the plus 2. What does the plus 2 do? Move, Move it to the left by 2. Fantastic. Okay? And the radius is 2. Yeah. So diameter of 4, radius of 2. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to replace all the x's with r cosine theta. So it's going to be r cosine theta plus 2 squared r sine theta squared is equal to 4, okay? We're going to square these. So here I square the first term. I get r squared cosine squared theta plus 2 times 2 times r cosine theta is 4r cosine theta plus 4 plus r squared sine squared theta equals none other than 4. Okay. We're in luck because the 4's go away. Now, take a look at what I'm going to do. I'm going to group these two together because they both have r squares. So I'm going to do r squared cosine squared theta plus r squared sine squared theta plus 4r cosine theta equal to 0. Can I factor out an r squared just from the blue? Of course I can. Mm-hmm. Plus 4r cosine theta equals 0. This guy is just a 1. So I just have r squared plus 4r cosine theta is equal to 0. Guess what, guys? I can divide by r, divide by r, divide by r, and I get r plus 4 is equal, nope, r plus 4 cosine theta is equal to zero. But polar equations have the form r equals to something. So what is that? r equals negative 4 cosine theta. Oh my gosh. r equals a cosine theta is a circle. And because it's a cosine, it's centered around the polar axis. And because it's negative 4, it's reflected to the left. So, here we have it. Right? And if we look at, if we look at the, um, the rectangular, if we look at the rectangular, this was a circle with radius 2. Yep, radius 2. And it's displaced so that the center is at negative 2 comma 0. Look at that. It's the exact same thing. Okay? That's like a miracle. Right? Fabulous. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So... What does this guy look like in um, rectangular form, right? If I solve that for y, I get 4 over 2x 
2 over x, right? And what does 2 over x look like? What does 1 over x look like? Re yes, those two reciprocal functions, right? Okay. Now, um, in section 2, we did a lot of different types of polar graphs, but we did not do all of them. So think about it. In, in the rectangular world, you know, you have so many different ones. You have absolute values. You have square roots. You have parabolas. You have circles. You have ellipses. You have, you know, you have so many. You have reciprocal functions. So many things. We didn't do all of them. So, yes, here we're going to come across some that we haven't done before, but that's fine. Okay. Everything else is the same, though. For each x, we put in r cosine theta. For each y, we put in r sine theta. Okay, so we have 2r squared sine theta cosine theta is equal to 4. Here, every single one of my students has that urge to divide by 2. Hang on. All right, I'm going to switch the order of the 2 and the r squared. Why? Because I can do that. Also, because I know what's coming. Now, What's this, guys? Where have we seen that before? 2 sine theta, cosine theta. Sine of what is equal to 2 sine theta, cosine theta? Yes. Sine of 2 theta. Right? Sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta, cosine theta. Yep. There isn't much, just that one. You know the ones you know, and then this one too. So this is <laughs> sine of 2 theta is equal to 4. Now we got to solve for r. Huh? Right. Let's solve for r squared. That's 4 over sine 2 theta. And there's always a tendency in math to eliminate fractions. So we are just going to write this as 4 cosecant 2 theta. Now, you have no idea what the graph of that looks like in polar form because we didn't cover it, and that's fine. You know, though, 2 over x has that form of the, right, of the two arms, so we're just going to graph it like that. And um, later on, I will show you all these with a calculator. It's not a lemniscate. A lemniscate is r squared equal to something, but it's not. Uh -huh. Right. Um, it would have been a squared sine 2 theta, but this is cosine 2 theta. Uh, I'm sorry, cosecant 2 theta. It's 1 over. Okay. What's r equals, what's y equals x squared? It's a parabola. So, here we go. Y is always R sine theta. X is always R cosine theta, but now we're going to square it. Okay? So, I'm going to get R sine theta equal to R squared cosine squared theta. Too many R's. Let's divide. Sine theta is r cosine squared theta. So what's r? Sine theta over cosine squared theta. And it's convention that we write this as sine of theta over cosine of theta times 1 over cosine of theta. Right? I just split up the cosine. So that's tangent of theta. Cosec uh, secant of theta. Now, how do you know to write it that way? So again, I said there it's it's customary to what do you call it? Eliminate fractions. So now, if you were to write that as sine theta secant squared theta, would it be a big deal? No. Okay. I mean, yeah. So and this is a parabola, so it'll look. 
like this. Okay. All right, converting from polar to rectangular. Okay, so if you do have r and theta and you want x and y, okay, well, how are you going to, well, x is going to be r cosine theta, y is going to be r tangent or sine theta, and we're also going to use the expression for tangent. Oh, one more that we sometimes use is r squared is equal to x squared plus y squared. So I've tried to put like, you know, all the different types of problems you're going to run into. Okay. But, you know, we do the best we can here. Okay. So theta equals pi over 4. What does that look like? The equation. It's a line, right? Here. Okay. So I have theta equals pi over 4. So all of my relationships, right, between polar and rectangular are with r sine or cosine theta. There is no r here. And okay, if I do have a theta, it's the tangent of theta. So how can I put in a tangent here? Well, easy. I take the tangent of both sides. Because why not? Okay, because you can take the ln of both sides, you can take the logarithm of both, you can take the square root of both sides, you can take the tangent of both sides. Okay, tangent of theta is y over x. Well, that's the thing is all of the relationships that go between theta and y and x either involve an r sine or a tangent. So you need r sine or theta. Well. It's so much more complicated to do R sine of both of them, right? So take a look here. Tangent of theta is y over x. Tangent of pi over 4 is 1. Right? So then what's y? y equals x. Does that look like the graph for y equals x? It sure does. Here is another one. So basically, you know what? I'll tell you this. If you have theta equals blah, just know to take the tangent of both sides. If you have r equals 7, okay, again, you have r. There is no sine or cosine, so you're stuck with r squared equals x squared plus y squared. But okay, this is just a single r. Oh my gosh, I wish it was an r squared. Hey, let's just square both sides because we can do that. Okay, right? So r squared is equal to 7 squared, but r squared is really x squared plus y squared is equal to 49. r equals 7 is a circle of diameter 7, a radius 7, and this is a circle with radius 7. So 2, 4, 6... 7, okay, all right, one more, okay, now here, I have a sine theta, okay, but all of my relationship stuff here is not just sine theta, it's R sine theta. Gee, if I only had my equation here as r sine theta, what could I possibly do? Mul or what if I multiply both sides by r? Because why not? How do you know to do this? This is, okay, so this is it. When I was a student, whether in high school or college or whatever, and my teacher and my professor would do the stuff, I would be like, okay, there is no, see, like, you, like, okay, you know how to do that. I don't. How am I supposed to do it? So then when you go home and you have your homework problem and it's R equals a number, you say, hey, how did Miss Malikian do it? What hand waving did she do? Oh yeah, she squared both sides. When it's R equals a number sine theta, hey, what did Miss Malikian do? Oh, she multiplied both sides by R. You know what I mean? Mimic and then eventually you'll know. So R squared 
is equal to negative 5r sine theta. But what's r squared? And this is negative 5, and what's r sine theta? It's just y, right? Whoa. Yes, whoa. So now x squared plus y squared plus 5y is equal to 0. Okay, so let's go back here. Remember this guy? r equals negative 5 sine theta. What kind of equation is that? r equals a sine theta. That's a circle. Is this a circle? Are x and y both squared? Yeah. Is there a plus between x squared and y squared? Do they have the same coefficients? Yeah. It's so a circle. But how do you write it in the form that we recognize? Completing the square. Come on, guys. This is fun. Yes. I've told you. This is why I love math, because when I'm teaching it, in my mind, I'm just like, oh my gosh, and this is like what you use this for, and this, and it's so much fun. We are, we, we've made it to math nirvana. This is it. We're, we're here. So I'm going to lump, I'm going to lump these together, plus a number equals zero. So here's what happens. X squared is alone. It's got nobody. So you leave it alone. Y, the y's, you lump them together. Y squared plus 5y plus a number equals 0 plus a number. What number goes there, guys? 5 over 2 squared. Always take the number, divide by 2, then square it. 6.25, 6.25. So then x squared plus y plus 2.5 squared equals 6.25. So now, take a look. This is a circle. The square root. Square root of both, right? Circle. Center is at 0, negative 2.5. Radius is... 2.5. If you look at negative 5 sine theta, does it make, okay, so where is this located? Is it on the polar axis or vertical? Like on theta equals pi over 2. Is it polar axis or theta equals pi over 2 for the sine? Where is sine maximum? Uh, pi over 2, right? So it would be here, but since it's negative, it would be here. Okay, remember 5 cosine theta would have been here, 5 sine theta is here. So 5 sine theta, negative 5 sine theta is here. So if this was 2, 4, 6, it would be here. That's how we would graph it in the polar form. What does the rectangular form say? The center is 0 and negative 2.5. Does that match? Yes. It so matches. Okay, all right. The polar distance, I'm going to leave for tomorrow. This is actually from 9.1, okay? So you're in luck because you get to do all of this for tomorrow. And tomorrow I have an extended period, so I'm going to do that and 9. Point, I mean 7.4.